Hey, happy Finish Friday, everybody. I want you to buckle in today because we're gonna be going over the differences between milk paint and a chalk-based paint. So, there is a reason why I'm going over this, and it's primarily because on our before and after group on Facebook and when we get customer service questions, people will ask us, how do I know the difference between milk paint or a chalk-based paint with your one-step paint? How do I use that on a project? What kind of piece of furniture do I use it on? What's the difference? So I thought, what a great opportunity to be able to teach you and raise your level of connoisseurship in the finishing world. So um, let's go over just a little bit of that today. So first of all, I wanna show you one of the major differences is the fact that your milk-based paint and your chalk-based paint are gonna come in two different, totally different containers. The milk paint is going to come in a powder form. The reason for that is because it has a certain amount of shelf time. Once you mix it up, it's only good for about two weeks in a Tupperware container in the refrigerator. So you usually mix up about how much you need for a project, but I'm gonna go into why it looks different. The other thing is, in your chalk-based paint, it's going to be a much thicker consistency and once this milk paint is mixed up, I want you to look at the difference of the consistency. So here's your milk paint. Look how thin it is. See how runny it is? You have to work on a more vertical surface. Then look at your, your chalk-based paint. Look how much thicker it is. Now, there's also a lot of differences in the type of surface that you put it on. So with our chalk-based paint, all chalk-based paints, guys, are not the same. With our one-step paint, it, is, it has no VOCs, it is water-based, but here's one of the biggies. Let's say I have a kitchen cabinet, so you see here I've got it half and half. One has been painted and one has not. If you have an oak kitchen cabinet, all you have to do is clean it first with our clean, clean slate. Now, why is it important to clean a piece of furniture that you're gonna paint first, uh, that you're gonna paint with a chalk-based paint? The reason is, um, is because, let's say you, you haven't been in that house since the 70s. You haven't um, owned that piece of furniture. They, people are going to use things like oils, lemon oils, orange oils, um, maybe mineral oils. You don't know what's been put on, especially liquid gold that was really big in the 70s. Everybody put liquid gold on everything because it made it shiny for a, for a time. Um, we've got to get all that off. The other thing is it may have wax on it. A lot of people think that if they use wax on a piece of furniture um, and then they want to come back and paint over it again, that they can take some mineral spirits or maybe some lacquer thinner. That's not going to take the wax off. We spent a year and a half formulating the clean slate. Clean Slate will take wax off of furniture. So I always tell everybody, degreasers are great, uh, but the Clean Slate is what's going to allow you to get off the residue to be able to uh, paint a piece of furniture and feel really good about it. So just to kind of um, reiterate, if you're watching today, we're going over the difference between a milk paint and a chalk-based paint product. Ours is called One Step. Um, what are the differences, kind of what different pieces you want to use it on. The other thing is, I want to ask you, tell me where you're from. Send me some love. Uh, let me know what state you're from. And, uh, and we want you to ask questions. It's 12 o'clock Central Standard Time on this Friday, so if you're watching it live, um, I am here to be able to answer questions because guess what? There's no dumb questions. Everybody learns from something that you're thinking or that I might not go over. Here's your opportunity to be able to ask me live. And if you're watching it after, uh, maybe you're watching this on Saturday night and you're figuring out what you wanna do on a project and you say, oh my gosh, I wanted to know the difference between milk-based paint and chalk-based paint, um, then be sure and do hashtag replay. That way we know you're watching it later. Are there any questions thus far? Are we good? Shout outs from Florida. Yay, hey Utah. Florida. Utah. Hey Utah. Okay, so. Texas. So we are, we're gonna make sure this is nice and clean first. And then, um, then that way we wanna make sure that it dries. So after you clean it with a clean slate, make sure it air dries and there's, there's no residue and it's completely dry before you actually start painting. So the easeability, here's the other thing. 
When we're working with a chalk-based paint like ours, you don't have to sand your surface. You do not have to prime it. A lot of people think they've got to put kills or something on it first. You don't have to. I just want you to clean it first with a clean slate. Then, um, once it's dried off, you're ready to paint. You don't have to sand it. You don't have to prime it. You don't have to strip it. You can go directly on top of it. That's the ease. A lot of people don't know the difference between our one-step paint and another chalk-based paint. There are a multitude of differences. Ours is a true calcium carbonate, which is chalk, a true calcium carbonate paint that you do not have to seal. So a lot of people are like, you have to put wax on it. Ours, you do not have to. You're going to have a beautiful matte finish. But if you want to wax it, it allows you to be able to come back with a lot of our different waxes and our dust of ages to be able to change the finish, but it's not necessary. It's not gonna wipe off. I can easily clean our one-step paint that's on a piece of furniture with Windex with a cleaner and it's not going to affect it at all. It's really important that you understand the difference in that. So, I want you to be able to see the consistency, see how thick it is. Now, here's the other great thing about it. You can use the this one-step chalk-based paint on top of, yes, something that's already lacquered. You can use it on oil base. You can use it on mahogany or cherry. Anything that's old that you're rescuing and restoring. Guys, you can use it on melamine, resin, plastic, glass. Um, you've got to allow it to cure. You've got to allow it to cure on the glass probably for about 72 hours. Um, and you'll notice that I'm using a synthetic brush. So as I'm placing this on here, I just want to make sure that I do long, clean strokes. Go back and add some more paint, come back in. Now, today's not more about a, um, it's not about a painting lesson as much as it is I'm wanting you to see the difference. So here's what's so great about the one-step paint. What's the first thing we notice that I'm getting here? One, I'm getting great coverage. The other thing is, it's opaque. Opaque means I can't see through it. It's 100% coverage. And the fact that I've got to be able to come back if I want to, I can wax it. You'll notice on this side right here, I did just a little bit of um, light wax on it. Because that way, if it's in your kitchen, if you wanna be able to go back in, and uh, rub a white wet, a wet rag over it, you can. Um, and then here's a little piece of furniture that I've painted over here. This was something that I got at a little antique mall that's right behind me. Um, I love getting inexpensive little pieces for $20 that I can totally redo a piece of furniture. You know, the other thing is, I tell my, uh, my students that we throw away 28 million tons of furniture in the U.S. every year. 28 million tons, that's not furniture, guys, that's tons of furniture. And so many times people throw them away because they're made out of, maybe they're resins, maybe they're particle board, maybe they're formica. Formica just isn't for countertops. Formica is what a lot of pieces of furniture were made out of in the 60s. I had the Sears and Roebuck Formica bedroom suit. You can paint on Formica with our one-step paint. You cannot with the milk paint. I'm gonna go over that in just a minute. So this little piece was actually um, like a particle board, a very inexpensive little piece, but it, it did have a structure inside of um, some wood, so I thought it was worth rescuing and restoring, and I actually gilded the hardware. We were talking about earlier, we could do a whole finish Friday on just what you do to hardware, because hardware can really make a difference um, in your piece, and you don't want to neglect that. But you know, the other thing, look what you know, look what um, I wanna show you this. Look how I did it in two different colors. So a lot of people don't know why um, I've created these little pots. This little pot, as far as the square footage of this chalk-based paint, you can buy two little pots and paint this entire piece. You don't need a quart of paint. As far as the square footage and what it will cover, um, all I'm gonna need is to be able to paint the sides and the top, and then I would need another pot to be able to paint the drawers, and you're done. So um, the coverage is great, it has no VOCs, you can use it on baby furniture, you don't have to worry about it, um, and you do not have to seal it, and you don't have to sand it, prime it, or um, strip it to get it ready to be able to paint. So, but the main thing that you need to realize is the fact that chalk-based paint um, is going to be an opaque surface. If you want to be able to antique it, you can do that with waxes. I prefer, and I've always taught this, 
If you want a more antiqued finish, then you need to move into milk paint. Um, we call ours a Toscana milk paint because Toscana means Tuscany. A lot of you know that I studied in Italy and it, it gives you a much more authentic, worn look. But if you want a full coverage, if you want it to be opaque, if you want to be able to take something and you want in its oak or a different finish or even brick or whatever, um, you can put the uh, chalk base one step paint on top of it. Now, I even have, this is just a particle board cabinet door that I had painted and we had painted it in a pale gray color and we came back on top of it with our ceruzine wax. So you see how the fact that with our one-step paint, it has that beautiful matte finish. That's because you can come back on top of it uh, with glazes. You can come back on top of it with waxes and totally change the look. So I'm gonna show you that really, really quick. Are we good on questions? So everybody, everybody knows, nobody's wondering what's the difference. Um, okay. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. We understand about cleaning, and we understand about how we wanna be able to apply it. So, this is a cabinet door that I have painted entirely um, in our one-step paint, and I'm just gonna show you really quickly before I go to milk paint. Question? Yes. Diana asked if you want a chippy finish, is there something you should do before painting? Um, okay, is this Diana? Is that what's the question? Diana, I am, I am not a fan of a, a chippy finish that is looking like um, it wasn't intentional. Now, that's a whole other Finish Friday as far as teaching you how to make something look worn. Now I'm gonna pull something as I've said that. I'm gonna pull this down and I wanna show you. This is a chippy finish done with our um, one step paint. So you've got, you've got a base color, which is your cream, and then you've got your gray on top of it. This is what we call kind of a chippy finish, but it's been done with our cracked patina. So when you're wanting to be able to get a chippy finish like this, it's best to sandwich it. I have a whole other uh, Facebook Live that you can go in and watch this. So usually with chippy finishes, you're gonna have two colors. You can even have three colors. So we talk about the cracked patina being like an Oreo cooker, cookie. It's the center of the Oreo cookie. So you've got your first color that you painted on, then you're gonna put a coat after it's dry of cracked patina and then you'll come after the cracked patina's dry, you'll come back on top of it and pull it off. That's the best way to get a chippy finish. Not with sandpaper. Sandpaper, um, it looks raw. It looks like, um, I, I joke, and I may get in trouble for saying this, I'm sure I will. I don't mean to offend anybody. Um, but there's a lot of times when people distress furniture, it looks like it's been hooked up to a pickup truck and drug down a gravel road. There's no intentionality. What I'm wanting to teach you how to do is think about how that piece was used, where it wore, where would it naturally have gotten the wear and tear over a period of time. So as a rule, when you're working with a chalk base paint, it's more about coverage, it's more about um, kind of a cabinet finish and not necessarily wearing it, but that cracked patina will allow you to get that chippy look. Yes? Sadie from Wyoming asks, how long to wait between clean slate and using the one step paint? Sadie, that's a great question. So just make sure that you wipe it off really well and probably air drying 15 or 20 minutes, you're fine. Then you're good to go. Okay, love that. Debbie wants to know, is milk or chalk based paint better for kitchen cabinets? Who asked that question? Debbie. Debbie, I think that's a really good question. Because now, and, and it's gonna, um, I know what Jean's thinking. My kitchen cabinets um, in another house that we had that were probably one of my favorites ever were milk paint. We lived in that house eight or nine years, maybe 10 years. Everybody always came in and bragged about how incredibly gorgeous our kitchen cabinet. I mean, like they stopped and was like, what is this? We sealed it with the wax, which I'll talk about in just a minute. You always have to seal uh, milk paint in some way, unlike the chalk-based paint. Um, 
I remember at one time we had 110 teenagers in our kitchen doing a buffet, um, and they were everywhere. So you can't you can't scrub it like you can the one step paint. Um, but if you love the milk paint finish, you can have it on your kitchen cabinets. If you want real durability and you want to be able to scrub them and that type thing, I would stick with a chalk based paint like our one step. Okay, great question. Are we good on Instagram? Okay, all right, so now remember this is my cabinet door that's been painted um, with the one step paint. It has just a beautiful matte finish and I'm gonna take my uh, ceruzine wax and here's another reason why the chalk based paint it has a matte finish a lot of people are like can i get the same look just using like an acrylic paint there's a lot of paint companies out there guys L look at me for just a second there's a lot of paint companies out there that are calling it chalky finish or chalky this or whatever and all they are is an inexpensive acrylic paint one they do have vocs in it the other thing is it doesn't have that beautiful matte finish that allows you to be able to change it by adding different waxes and things to it that gives you a beautiful cabinet finish. So that's the reason for having a matte finish that allows you to be able to do whatever you want to it. But with ours, you don't have to seal it if you don't want to. If y'all aren't familiar, matte is in. Matte is in big time and you don't have to seal it if you don't want to. But I just wanna show you um, how if you want to be able to add a wax to be able to get a beautiful finish You can take just a little bit of the ceruzine wax That's what I'm working with and I'm gonna get a lint-free rag I can tell this one this this class is going to be a little longer than normal. So I apologize Look at this. Do you see how easy that is? Look how that goes on. Look at that. Now, I'm using this chip brush. When you're working with the, um, the waxes, you do need to use my chip brushes. But look how I'm putting it on. Look how I'm going, I'm cross hatching back and forth and then just spreading it out. So it almost looks like a little bit of a white glaze. Is that showing up on the camera at all? I'm gonna do just a little bit more. Now, when you use the waxes, you don't need to put anything else on top of this. Some people will think, oh, I've got to come back and seal it. No, you don't. It's sealed. Um, when I was working in the bodega in Italy, and if you think about all the antiques that we buy, even painted ones with beautiful finishes, they are sealed with waxes. We have carnauba wax in our waxes, and they will dry to a really hard, hardy finish. So you just want to put this on. Make sure it's nice and thin. That way you don't have to come back and do anything to it. Once it's dried to the touch, I can come back now and just buff that um, and have just a pretty little sheen on it or I can leave it matte. Isn't that gorgeous? That looks like a furniture cabinet finish, guys. This is hardy. I can have this on kitchen cabinets. Um, and that was why with this finish, I thought it was so pretty. Isn't that a gorgeous finish? You can use the wax on existing cabinets. It's not gonna be as hardy because it's soaking into uh, the one-step chalk based paint that I actually used. All right, so now I'm gonna talk to you about milk paint. What are the difference between the waxes? Um, all right, so the, um, the Mind Your Own Beeswax is just clear. The, um, the actual ceruzine wax, that's a whole other class I need to teach you about ceruzine. Um, this actually has calcium carbonate in it. So it gives you that beautiful white finish. Um, but the other thing is we do have other waxes as far as our light wax and our dark wax. I tell people if you want to use dark wax, guys, you always have to use light wax. Don't ever use this by itself. It bonds, it's married, they're married. If you just think about it, this is a husband and a wife. I always say this is Jean and this is me. They always have to go together. You cannot use this by itself. It was developed just to be able to be used with the light wax. The light wax goes over everything. The dark wax just goes in the areas you wanna age it. Yes. What do you clean the paintbrush with when you're finished? What a great question. Who asked that question? Sadie. Sadie, that is a great question. All right, so. This is a petroleum-based product. The reason is, is because, why are you laughing? <laughs> so the reason is, is because it allows the, the, the natural waxes, the natural beeswax and the carnauba wax to be able to flow out over your surface. So you need to be able to clean it with the clean slate. The clean slate's gonna get wax out of your brush. So great question. 
You can clean the one-step paint, the chalk-based paint, it's water-based, you can clean it with water um, out of your paintbrush, but your waxes are gonna have to be cleaned with a clean slate. Great question, we all get to learn from one another. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside, and now I wanna talk to you about milk paint. Are we good on questions? Does the wax have to be maintained? Um, the answer to that is no. I mean, if there's a lot of wear and tear on something, and I mean a lot of wear and tear, you can come back if you want to, like if with your, um, with your dark wax when you're aging something, but as a rule, uh, you put it there and you leave it. You can come back if you want to in maybe six months, um, and maybe a year once in a while, like on, a, on an antique piece, because I use this on my antiques. Y'all know I do furniture tonic and regular wax on my uh, furniture pieces. I don't ever use uh, pledge or industry or anything like that. They're dust magnets. I want to really give my furniture food, um, so I use waxes and wood tonic. So, but you, you're good to go with just one coat. All right, so now let's talk about milk paint. Now we're talking about the differences today. We're not talking about how to do it. I did some milk paint last week, but I do want to show you kind of the differences. Did I just get rid of, let me see, okay. Here is another cabinet door that I painted with just ballet white, which is a one-step paint. See, it's opaque, it's solid. I can come back on top of it with waxes. I can antique it, I can age it. But now look at the, what I painted in milk paint. <laughs> look at the depth. See how it's been worn? It looks like it's been worn naturally. It doesn't look like I've gotten sandpaper after it. Now, is it next week that we're showing them how to do this? Okay, sneak peek, sneak peek. Because you were part of it today, you're gonna to be able to see. I painted, um, our team here, worked on a large chest. This is a Drexel piece. It's a really big piece, and I think it's got nine drawers in it. And we did it in a chalk, I mean a milk-based paint. This was done with our cracked gesso and our milk-based paint, and I'm gonna take you through the whole process next week. So if you love this finish, if you love the depth of it, you wanna tune in next week. Because these Drexel pieces, you can find them everywhere, anywhere from $30 uh, to $60, and you can redo them, and they can look amazing in a family room or your bedroom. This piece is also done in milk paint. Can you kind of see the difference? Let me take it over here real quick. All right, so let's look at the piece that I did that I showed you earlier. It's more solid, it's more opaque, it's total coverage, it can go on a lot of different surfaces. Now let's look at the milk paint piece. Let's get a close-up of this. Can you see the difference? See where well, one's more about full coverage, protection, but this is more about depth. See the depth of it? See the variances? Um, in the paint and how different it looks. A lot of people will say, you know, what's your favorite kind of paint? I love them all. I love lacquer. I love because it's high sheen. I love the easeability of using a chalk-based paint. But if you talk about what makes my heart go pity pat, it's gotta be milk paint. But it's not just milk paint in the fact of any milk paint, because I'm gonna tell you I am very, um, I'm very picky because it's important to me to use a true pigment that's not a synthetic pigment. All of my pigments are shipped from Provence and um, they have just these natural tonalities to them when I come back and I antique it. The other thing I want you to notice is look how thin it is. A lot of people, if you're used to working with um, the one-step paint like this, it stays pretty thick in the consistency. When you're working with milk-based paint, guess what? Even if I've just, after I've just been sitting here, the water's on top, and guess what? My pigment is down at the bottom. Every time I'm working with milk-based paint, I've got to kind of stir it with my brush like this, and I've got to know that I've got to agitate it because there's nothing in here that keeps it solid like this. It's gonna have it, the water and the pigment's gonna separate, so you've got to just constantly be agitating it when you're painting. So let me just show you. Are there any questions as far? Are we okay? All right, so here's the other major, major difference. You notice how 
with our one step paint, we can put it directly on top of oak, we can put it on a cabinet, I can put it on cherry, mahogany, anything after I clean it. Milk paste paint is totally different. I cannot put that directly on top of something that has a lacquer finish. It's not going to adhere unless I want to really distress it a lot. Um, I need to be able to make sure that it's going to bond. So I either have to put a bonding agent in this or what I like doing is I like putting it on top of the one-step paint. So I'll paint my piece in my one-step paint and then I'll mix up my chalk paint, and that's what I did to that Drexel piece. That's what I'm gonna show you next week. So the um, the one-step paint with the milk paint acts as a bonder. It acts as a kind of a prep for it because you do have to have that. All right, so the other thing I want you to notice is look, look how thin it is. You're going to have to work on a vertical surface. You can't work, I mean, you're on a horizontal surface. You cannot work on a vertical surface um, because it's gonna have a tendency to run. So you're gonna have to take your doors off. You're gonna have to take your drawers out. You're gonna have to lay them down just like this. So now here's the other thing. It feels weird at first. Um, if you've worked with the um, one-step paint before and you're really nervous, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't. I can't mix up something from a powder. I'm gonna mess it up. I promise you're not. I want you to go to Restore. I want you to get some old cabinet doors. Um, hopefully you don't live in Memphis and you're not gonna go buy them all up because we've gotta go there today and get some. Um, but you're just gonna see how incredibly beautiful and how easy working with my milk paint is. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm very partial. Now look at this. See how when I'm dipping my brush back in here, what am I doing? I'm agitating it. Because remember, the pigments and the water will have a tendency to separate. So you just get used to it. It's kinda of like knitting, it's kinda of whatever you're working on. You just wanna make sure that you're agitating it. It's no big deal. And this will flow out beautiful. It's going to dry down much lighter. You can see how it's already, it's kinda of hot in here. Um, you're gonna see how it's gonna dry down much lighter, and then it allows you to be able to come back and antique it. But it is so easy to use. It gives you a beautiful, beautiful finish on your furniture, and it allows you to be able to antique it and do multiple colors. I'm gonna do another uh, Finish Friday on mixing colors and having two or three different values that you can have colors underneath. All right, so I'm just gonna set that aside. It's gonna dry in about 15 or 20 minutes. The, yes? Susan asks, is Drexel a furniture brand? Drexel is a furniture brand, really big, they're still around, aren't they? They used to be, they make solid, hardwood, American-made furniture. The quality is awesome. So when you've got Drexel pieces, do what? Used to. Well, may, they may not be around anymore. The th here's the thing. You know, a lot of the companies, the Thomasvilles, that were made in the Carolinas, they were all solid hardwood. They weren't sent um, to be made in China and overseas and then have finishes on them that, that we didn't, we don't really care for that much. But here's the thing. This is why I encourage people um, to buy um, pieces that would normally be thrown away because if they're like a fruit wood finish or those beautiful Drexel pieces that were made um, you know, in the 70s and the 80s, they're solid. They're great pieces for you to be able to rescue and restore them. Yes? Susan asked, what's the best temperature to use the milk paint in? Ooh, that's a really good question. You know, we're getting ready into summer months. You just want to make sure you're not working where it's too, too hot outside. No, not extreme cold or extreme hot. Um, here's the great thing about it is, too, um, it has no VOCs. It is a food-grade product. The entire line of products that I have with the milk-based paint, whether if you're working with... Um, the cracked gesso, whether you're working with the antiquing glaze or whether you're working with the milk paint itself, it's all food grade, so you don't have to worry about working with toxins. Um, a lot of, maybe you don't know this, um, but I'm a cancer survivor, and everything that I'm around, whatever I'm smelling, um, I am very aware of what it's doing to my health, and I don't want it to affect me. So um, this is like shopping in the produce aisle for your paint. It's all natural, and you don't have to worry about it. Yes? What color? Okay, so do you love this color? Who, who's asking what color? This is Ann Thompson. Hey, Ann. 
And I'm just going to tell you, I custom made this, not to frustrate you, but let me tell you what it is. So, I took my um, Amalfi Coast, and then I took my Noir, which is black, and I did a full teaspoon of this, and I added about a quarter teaspoon of the black, and I mixed it together, and it gave me this yummy color. Yes. Leah asks, can you add milk paint after you have already sealed something with matte sealer? Hmm. You know what I would do? Who asked that question? Leah. All right, Leah. Um, I wanted to make sure that I don't have lipstick on my teeth. All right, so um, Leah, if I have put a matte sealer on a piece, um, maybe I've even waxed it, what I want you to do is I want you to come back, I want you to clean it with Clean Slate, and I want you to go on and put on a coat of um, one-step paint. That one-step paint acts as a beautiful primer for milk paint. It's a matte finish. It's going to have a tendency to bond better. I don't worry about what's underneath, but I would really rather you put the one-step on first. Does that answer that question? Yes. Did you have a question? Are we good? Okay. So, see how it's drying down? It's going to dry down to this beautiful light color. And I'm going to set this up here for just a second. I don't, if I don't want to, I can just put one coat on that if I'm going to come back and antique it. And this is one that I was working on last week. I've got a couple of these. You need to go back and watch last week how you can come back and antique it. I've got just a little bit of antiquing glaze. We have another question. Yes. Does milk paint need to be strained before you use it? A lot of times, it's, who asked that question? Deb. Deb, I have the smartest people that watch my Finish Fridays because I love, um, I love your questions. So you can strain it. <laughs> Here's another great tip. Make your paint the night before. Let it set up. Put it in a container with a top on it. I'll put it in a little Tupperware container. That way I'll shake it up really good. It just, it will thicken up and it'll be much nicer to be able to work with. In a, in a pinch, you can make it and work with it just fine, but I like it if I have the time frame and if I planned my projects, make it the night before. So, if you want to strain it, you can. Sometimes I'll just put it through a paint strainer, a little bit of cheesecloth, and that'll get out any pebbles. But if you allow it to sit overnight, you shouldn't have any problems. Great question. Yes, are we okay on here? All right. So, I'm going to take a little bit of my antiquing glaze. I may see if I've got a sponge. Oh wait, is this cracked patina? Sure is, wrong product, hold on guys. All right, here's my antiquing glaze. And I'm gonna take a natural seawall sponge and I'm gonna get two things right here. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put a little bit of tap water in here. Cause this is gonna act as my bath. Sorry, I'm going into so much stuff today, but I want you to understand What's the difference between milk paint and what's the difference between a chalk-based paint? So hopefully we're answering some of these questions. I'm going to put my Seawell sponge into my water. Now, you're like, what is she doing now? She's already painted it. Why is she doing this? This is only if you want to antique it. So a lot of people are like, I want to antique my piece. Look, I want, I want it to look like this. I want to be able to see layers of color underneath. I want to be able to see some age. I want to see depth. If this is the look you want, you want a milk-based um, finish. Now, all milk paints are not alike. With mine, um, like, I've, like I've said, you, um, I get all my pigments from Provence. The colors, the depth of the finish you're going to get is much better. Here's the other thing. If you want to be able to get a fissure crack to your milk-based paint, we have what's called a crack gesso. Here's just a little peek of what that looks like. Before you actually put on your milk paint, you can put on a coat of the cracked gesso and then lay the milk paint on top of it and it will crack it. So that's a whole other Facebook Live. We did one of those last week. You can go back and watch it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my antiquing glaze like this. I'm gonna go over it and look. See this variation that you get from the milk paint? You're not going to get that from um, a chalk-based paint. You're not going to get that even from my one step. This is more about depth. It's about being able to age it. 
even if you don't want to wear it, you're like, well, what if we, um, what if we're not going to wear the edges? You can even come back and waxing milk paint looks so amazing. So as this dries off, it allows me to be able to just kind of wear the edges. It will literally pull the paint away and it'll allow me to be able to get the look. I'm gonna grab my drawer again. So look at this. Let me pull this away. So can you see on here? Let's look at the depth. Now does this make sense what I did? So I painted the whole piece in uh, one step. Then I came back and I put my crack gesso on. Can you see some of the details where it's like cracking and it looks like it's kind of popping off? And then I, I did one coat of the milk paint. I actually mixed the Amalfi Coast with the black and then I came back and I waxed it. Yes. Can cracked patina be used with milk paint or just cracked gesso? Great question. Who asked that question? Deb. Deb. Deb, you're on it today. All right, so great question. The, um, the crack gesso, if you want to crack milk paint, we're the only company that has this. I've, the on, I've been the only one that's developed a product that can be used with milk paint. The crack gesso will crack the milk paint. It gives you a beautiful, natural fissure crack that would be natural on an antique piece. Um, but if you want to crack the one-step paint and you want to be able to do a finish like this, you're going to need to be able to use the cracked patina. Does that make sense? You don't use cracked patina with milk paint. Okay. Yes. Did you have a question? Can you use antiquing glaze on wood or gel stained furniture? No. The antiquing glaze is formulated just to go with milk paint. So you have the antiquing glaze, you have the cracked gesso, and you have the milk paint. Those guys, they go together. All right? But here's the other thing. You always, 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 always have to seal milk paint. Why? Because it can be reactivated. So part of the beauty of it is how we can wear it and how we can antique it. But we've got to make sure that we seal it. Unlike with my one-step paint, my chalk-based paint, you do not have to seal it. It's good to go. But the milk paint, we do need to seal it. But we take it to our advantage because it's our way of really get some... Uh, variegated finish in it uh, with the waxes that can make it look beautiful. Here's a couple of examples. Look at this. Here's one of the pieces. Now I want you to start dissecting it. What was the first color that I put on on this? It was the least amount. It's that little peeking through color. That was the first color. It's not the last color. It was the first color that went on. It's one of our milk paints called Toulouse Rose. So I would put a cover of the Toulouse Rose over the entire piece first. And then I, after it dries, I come back and I put on a coat of the Noir, the black, and then I wore it off with the antiquing glaze. Does that make sense? So that way, that allows you to get a very natural, worn finish without it looking contrived. I don't use sandpaper at all on this. If you want a really authentic looking finish, you cannot get it with doing an agitation of a sandpaper. It has to be able to be worn off naturally. Yes. Janine asks, what do you do to get the base color, the one-step paint, to show through the color? That's easy. When I go back, who asked that question? Janine. Janine, great question. So, you saw when I painted, um, now this is not quite dry yet, but here's my little door that I just painted. You see how it's drying down? It's, the milk paint is always going to dry down the color of what your powder was before you ever added water. So, it's going to dry down light. Now, you know what? I'm gonna put my drawer aside for just a second because I love the fact that she asked that question and I wanna be able to show you. So here's my antiquing glaze. Let's go to this little area right here that's dry. Now, when I come back in, I need to be kind of, look at that. I need to be really careful. There's my white color showing through. So that way, if I came back and I did, um, I did a color underneath, it's gonna lift that off and that way it's looking a lot more natural than sandpaper and it's definitely a lot easier on your hands. So whatever color that you're going to have pop through, try to make sure that there's not too much contrast. We talk about light reflective value. You wanna make sure the colors are close enough and complementary enough that it can look really, really pretty. Don't you love that? Guys, I hope this try, I hope I did a good job of explaining 
The difference between milk paint and my one-step chalk base paint, um, the easeability of it, because the, here's the other thing I want you to realize. When you go to estate sales this weekend or tax sales or um, wherever, or maybe you're a curbside chopper. We talked about last night um, at an event I was at. Nothing's better than being a curbside chopper and being able to brag on the fact that you got something for free. Um, but you want to be able to understand all the different finishes that you can do to it, whether you may be thinking, it's like, should I lacquer that? Should I use milk paint? Should I do um, multi-variations of different colors on it? Should I use the one-step paint? So once you start really understanding and you get these processes in your creative DIY toolbox, your tool belt, then that way you're able to go out there and really make a difference. And if this is something that you do for a business, it's definitely something that you need to be able to add in your repertoire um, and start really learning. If you aren't part of our before and after Facebook on um, on Facebook, our before and after group, please join that so you can see all the amazing projects uh, that everybody does. And I want to make an announcement this week. Our winner of the One Step Paint Court, I mean, um, sample pot that we have, we're going to mail to Joe Garrett. Congratulations, Joe. Um, if you want to know how you can win our giveaway that we do every week, um, just go to the link below, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook, and enter, and then that way your name will go in for a drawing because we give away product every single week. So I hope this was informative. If you liked it, if you learned something, uh, share this with your friends. Send me some love. If you're not watching it live, be sure and please do hashtag replay, and I'll see you next week. And be sure, go to save and rescue and restore these 28 million tons of furniture, and let's not throw it away. Let's make it beautiful. Share with me and do hashtag um, Amy Howard Home. I want to see what you're doing. Have a great weekend, guys.